How can I help students to form personal connections with polar regions and climate change? My name is Justin Moody. I teach visual arts, photography, and career technical education classes at the high school level. A huge challenge that many young people face is the process of discovering a sense of urgency about climate change. Most of my students grew up on the California coast. We can see the Pacific Ocean from our school's campus. Many of my students have never even seen snow. For students to develop an appreciation for news about an entire ice shelf breaking off and floating away, they will need to achieve a true shift in their global perspective. I designed these lessons with a hope that if students are able to be artistically creative with the aesthetic of Arctic and Antarctic environments, they will have developed a deeper understanding needed to feel personally connected to polar regions. During the development process, the National Geographic Learning Framework really helped me to focus in on a set of specific goals for my students. Eventually, I observed my students learning in the areas of observation, communication, and problem solving. The biggest strides they took were connected to curiosity. Through this project, many students became far more aware of the polar regions than they ever had before. They were inquisitive about the ecosystems, they wanted to know about the survival in these harsh climates, they were astounded at the suggestion that they could be professionals working in one of these places. It opened up a whole new line of thinking for them and they became invested. Unfortunately, we couldn't take a field trip to visit the penguins. Because my students have studied other careers in the photography industry, this felt like a perfect opportunity for them to explore the world of set designs and scale modeling. In Hollywood, if a script calls for a scene to be shot in Antarctica, they don't ship the entire cast and crew down to the South Pole. They simulate the aesthetic of that environment in a studio. That's what I challenged my students to do as well. After learning about professional photographers who are actually shooting in these extreme climates, artists such as Paul Nicklin, James Baylog, and Jimmy Chin, students began to use their developing understanding of polar environments to devise a plan. Having already studied surrealism, students understood that they were basically working to create a visual illusion. They spent time taking photos of a wide variety of materials. These photo experiments led students to feel ready to shoot their final polar simulation. I've loved watching the students in their creative process. They've given me so many new ideas about how to grow and develop this project further in the coming years. Yet mostly, they've reinforced my belief that creative expression is one of the best ways for young people to develop a personal connection to any subject. When they were finished, students presented their artworks to the class and defended the accuracy of their aesthetic by pointing out key defining features of the Arctic or the Antarctic in their photograph. We pushed a few students asking them clarifying questions, but for the most part, students were successful in really showing us the depth of their understanding. Their curiosity had led them to a shift in perspective about the world and their problem solving had enabled them to communicate their new passion for these environments. Polar education is alive and well in California. I believe the students' artworks speak for themselves. My name is Justin Moody, and this is Visualizing the Poles.